Hey, hey. Good morning. Richard Blissbrook here. I'm in the foothills below Yosemite at Bliss Ranch. And I'm sitting in my lavender patch. <clears throat> I'm doing a little uh, farming. <laughs> this morning we're going to talk about three questions that will motivate your team. And there's a lot of questions that will motivate people, but uh, these three work especially well. So you can use these questions for your team. You can use these questions for an individual that you're coaching. You can use these questions if you're talking to a prospective business partner uh, to flush out some motivation with them. So all of this is in the context of the question, can you and I motivate other people? And you've probably all heard that cliche, you can't motivate other people. But <clears throat> my life is about, yes, you can. In fact, if you're a leader, that's what you get paid for, is motivating other people. And you can do it. And it's not hard. In fact, you can do it in about five to ten seconds. Uh, and how do you do it? You do it by asking them a question. When you ask somebody a question... What you lead them to do, providing the context is right for the question and you have some permission to ask the question, what you lead people to do is consider, visualize the answer to the question. <clears throat> and when they visualize the answer to the question, they're all of a sudden creating a new vision, a different vision than they had in their mind, a different mindset than before you ask them the question. Now, what are people thinking about before you ask them a question? Whatever they're thinking about, whatever their life's about. And it's, uh, in most cases, not about a beautiful future. Most people are thinking most of the time about what's going on right now in their life. And, you know, sometimes that's good things and sometimes it's challenging things. But that's the vision. That's what they're thinking about. <clears throat> so what you do as a leader, if you want to motivate people, is get permission, create a context for asking a question, and then ask the question and let people visualize and consider the answer. And as they do that, they paint a picture in their mind and their heart, changes their body chemistry, changes their pH in their body changes their uh, emotions in the moment. Here's an example. A question you might ask somebody, and here's how you create context. One of the simplest ways to create context is just tell people, I'm just curious. <laughs> I've asked people more crazy questions by first saying, I'm just curious. And somehow, when you, when you tell people, you know, I'm just curious. What did you have for dinner last night? <laughs> I'm just curious. How much are you going to get in Social Security when you retire? Or, you know, I'm just curious. Do you really love living where you live or you just live there because that's where you live? I don't know. You just ask people all kinds of crazy questions. Here's a question that you can ask people that will motivate them. <clears throat> and the question is um, something like, yeah, I'm just curious. If you had a rich uncle, and the rich uncle left you millions and millions of dollars, or maybe, you know, you got struck by lightning twice and you won the lottery, <clears throat> or, you know, it doesn't really matter how it happens, but let's just say all of a sudden money's no object. Like, you don't have to grind for a living. All your bills are paid. All your mortgages are paid off. Everything's paid for. You know, the lifestyle that you want. I'm not talking about being super rich. I'm just saying money's not, not the reason you have to work. What would you do? Like, what would you do with your time? Like, would you do something? Would you do, would you sit around and watch TV? And, you know, people that are working real hard and grinding and tired, they'll have a tendency to tell you, you know, I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> But what you can do is say, okay, after you did that for six months, then what would you do? After you'd watched all the Netflix shows and whatever else, <clears throat> then what would you do? 
you know, would you travel? Would you, you know, work a cause? Would you develop a hobby? Do you have a certain passion? Like that, what would you do? And, you know, people probably haven't thought about it, so they're not going to have a super articulate answer, but here's the point. When you get people thinking about it, they get motivated. You can just, you can watch it in their body language. You can watch it in their eyes. You can watch it in the tone of their voice, tone of my voice. I've been mowing weeds for two days. <laughs> oh, here's my, I'll show you my, that's my mower back there. Pull it behind the ATV. Yeah, you got to mow all this grass because in a month it's all going to be brown and dry. And that's what the forest fires happen. So that's what I do in April <laughs> part of the time. <clears throat> so you get people motivated just by thinking about it. And, you know, that's where you want people. You want people uh, to be motivated around you. And, you know, maybe that will motivate them to join your team. Maybe it'll motivate them to try your products. Maybe it'll motivate them to read a book. You know, I use that question all the time just to pass out the four-year career. You know, a question like that. So what would you do? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd do this, 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 and this. i pull this book out and i say, hey, this is a book that'll teach you exactly how to do that. It'll take you an hour to read it. Is your dream worth an hour? If you'll read it in the next couple of days, I'll loan it to you. If you give me some story about the next couple of days, I won't loan it to you. So uh, here's another question. <clears throat> uh, and it's about fun. I find fun to be one of the most spiritually inspiring concepts for human beings. Uh, and I find that, you know, generally, just generally, what we tend to do as human beings is somewhere around maybe the last year of high school or the last year of college, uh, we tend to give up fun for responsibility. You know, we have all of this social stuff bombarding us about, you know, you need to get good grades, you need to get a good job, you need to shape up, you know, no more fun, you got to pay attention now and and so, you know, we succumb to that, not all of us, and, you know, not all of us in different ways and different forms, but generally we succumb to that. And, of course, then we go get the job, and when we get the job, we get married, and when we get married, we have kids. And, and it's not that life isn't fun and kids aren't fun. I don't have them, but, you know, I have a stepdaughter who she's fun. <laughs> she's highly entertaining. <laughs> she's, Haley's 20 years old, and she's highly entertaining. Uh but, I'm, you know, I'm talking about the kind of fun where, you know, you and I are just doing what we've always wanted to do, what's super fun for us. So, you know, a question I ask people to motivate them is, I'm just curious, what is super, super fun for you? Like reckless, abandon, fun for you? Like, when, have you, when in your life have you had more fun than should even be legal? When have, when have you had so much fun that you were crying hysterically? When have you had that much fun? What's that much fun for you? And <clears throat> you could add to it if money were no object, what would be fun for you? Like, you know, would you like race, you know, offshore desert rat racing machines in the Baja 1000 if you could afford the crew and the car? Or would you just read? Or would you garden? It doesn't have to have anything to do with money. The question is, what is super fun for you? And when you get people considering that answer and talking about that answer, they get motivated. They, their body chemistry changes. Everything changes about them. And that's when you can get them to read a book or watch a video or maybe even come to an event or get on, you know, a Zoom with somebody uh, or, you know, look at a product, look at a concept. It's all about baby steps in enrolling people in network marketing. It's not about... Hey, chitty chat, chitty chat. Hey, what about this? What if you won the lottery? Blah, blah, blah. Now join my business. You know, that's like clubbing people to death to uh, talk to them about partnering with you in your business. That's not how it works. It's like romancing. Romancing is, you know, Tom, Chanel, right? Romancing. You know how to romance, right, Tom? It's like romancing. You don't like see the girl across the dance floor 
and walk over there and, you know, grab her by the hair and say, you know, let's have sex and then, you know, maybe we'll talk about marriage. No, you go over there and you, you know, you just, you're humble and you're grateful for the opportunity for, you know, conversation. And if you have some confidence and swagger, you got a chance. If you go over there and, you know, your head's down and, you know, I don't know, would you maybe dance with me? You know, she's probably not going to be so inspired to dance with you. But if you go over there and you look her right in the eye and you say, hey, I would love to dance with you. Would you dance with me? You're probably going to get a dance, right? But if you walk over there with all your swagger and confidence and say, how about sex? Um, not so much, right? Or if you do, <laughs> that's not who you want on your team, right? <clears throat> So same thing with our business. So if you can get somebody to join your business just on the first ask, maybe not the person you want in your business because maybe they don't make good critical thinking decisions and maybe they're easy in, easy out. Maybe, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, let's do this. And then, you know, three days later you can't find them. You know, what you want on your people are thinking, on your team are thinking people. People that are thinking about their future. They're thinking about it critically. They're thinking about what do I want for my future and how am I gonna get it? And when they look at your opportunity, they actually look at it. They look at the products, they try the products, they, they authentically fall in love with the products. You don't want somebody that joins your business that like doesn't really care about the products. They're not gonna stick. You can't build a multi-million dollar empire in network marketing with products you don't care about. You have to be a raving fan of the products. So anyway, I kind of got off track there, but the question, you know, what do you do for fun? Uh, gets people dreaming. It gets, it gets people thinking. It changes their body chemistry. And the third question that you might try with people is, you know, I'm just curious. <clears throat> what moves you? What inspires you? What fills you up? Where's your sweet spot in life? You know, maybe it is raising kids. So, hey, have you ever thought about you know, doing something with kids. Have you ever thought about, you know, creating a summer camp for kids? Have you ever thought about adopting? If that's a person's sweet spot. If a person's sweet spot is travel, you know, have you ever thought about being a professional travel travel blogger? Kimmy, had, Kimmy and I had so much fun with her blog when we traveled around the world. I mean, she just came up with this blog idea at the last minute, you know, for her 50 days for 50 years, 50 countries, or I don't know, 50 cities, whatever it was. And we're going all over the world. And she just at the last minute said, well, I'm going to write a blog about every day our travels. So everywhere we went, I introduced her as a global travel blogger. <laughs> we got really good service. <laughs> so what if you love travel, become a travel blogger? And, you know, somebody might say, well, there's no money in that. Well, what if money didn't matter? What would you do? So the way you get people dreaming and thinking about their future in a way that moves them emotionally and physically is to ask these kind of vision casting questions, vision casting questions, because in order for a person to answer the question, even think about answering the question, they have to create a new vision. They have to go to a place uh, in inspiration and ingenuity that they're not in the moment. So let's say, you know, you and I are sitting on an airplane next to each other. And if I could peer into your mind and heart and get a sense of, well, what are you thinking about right now in this moment? You're probably, probably thinking about, I wish this plane flight would get over. So then I got to get here and get off the plane and get my baggage and hope I get a good, you know, Uber and then I got to go to this meeting or maybe I get, get home or whatever people are. That's what they're thinking about. And I, I promise you, people sitting next to you on an airplane, at least 97% of them, we know, 97% of them are not thinking about what they would do if money were no object. They're not thinking about what they're going to do with the rest of their life that fills them up with passion. They're not thinking about what would be the most fun for me to do for the rest of my life? Like, how could I have, like, wake up every morning and be, like, on fire about having fun? They're not thinking about that. So guess what? They're not maximizing their inspiration. 
They're not maximizing their motivation. They're just sort of existing. They're getting by. You know, they're what we call yellow lighters or red lighters. You know, they're yellow lighter people just pump the brakes. You know, they just do enough every day to maintain the status quo. Don't want to lose the house. Don't want to lose my job. Don't want to go backwards financially. And then, you know, red lighters are people, they got their they got the emergency brake on. They, they might have their foot on the gas a little bit because they want a better life, but they got the emergency brake on. They're not going anywhere. They're going backwards. Because, you know, the person that's got the, the, the red lighter sitting next to you on the airplane, they're worrying about their life. Their vision is things are going to get worse. The, red, the yellow lighter, they're just thinking about how do I maintain the status quo. Now, the green lighter next to you is probably reading an inspirational book or writing. Or, better yet, they're curious about you. That's the green lighter. That's the person who's asking you questions. Because you're part of their potential business? No, they're just curious. Why? Because they have the freedom to be curious about other people that are not all wrapped up in their own stuff. So they're asking you questions. They're building a relationship with you. That's a green lighter. So how do you motivate other people? Well, one, you got to be a green lighter yourself. You got to be on fire about your fun yourself, right? You got to have a vision about where you're going. And then just be curious. Hey, I'm just curious. And then ask your question. And let people consider the answer. And let it go where it goes. You know, this isn't about, okay, as soon as they answer your question, you hand them a four-year career. No. That's just a place the conversation could go, but only if you have one with you. Uh, Just let the conversation go where it goes. It's magic, absolutely magic. All right, that's this morning's lesson.